Howdy folks, it's Alter here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are in the middle of the Transcontinental Mission. Spirit of St. Louis, Charles Lindbergh. I think this is video six of the series this is turning into. There are only two legs for the mission, but they're very, very long. And this is very, very interesting compared to the open water mission. So we're making a series out of it, I guess. Part six. Here we go. So I changed the time to be late morning. It's like 6.45 a.m. Just to make it more interesting because we've been flying in normal afternoon sunlight for the past seven or eight hours for me. <laughs> so I just wanted it to be interesting. We're flying over Elkhart, Kansas right now. If you want to take a peek at it. Um, there we go. Let's get the drone in the right position. There we go. Um, and this video, I'm planning on completing leg one, which means landing in St. Louis. I'm predicting it's another, I don't know how many hours. Let me see. This, I think, was three and a half. We just, we're not even here yet. So I think another five and a half hours, maybe, of real life flying time condensed into one consumable video for you. So, um, I figure since it's mostly going to be grasslands in the plains of the United States. I don't need to show you as much sightseeing as when we're going through the mountains and all that stuff. I mean, it's still beautiful. In fact, the plains is sometimes my favorite place to fly. But I don't need to show you circular farmlands for six hours. So anyway, what else? We're slowly coming down in altitude. Um, I believe St. Louis is was it 605 feet St. Louis elevation? I think it's 605 feet. Oh, the city is 466. The airport is whatever. Every time I Google it, I get something different. So anyway, we don't have to be this high if you don't want to be, right? So we're going to slowly come down as the sun rises in front of us. And I promised you in the end of the previous video, I was going to explain how I'm doing this. First, are we on track? We are on track. So let's... Say about 78 degrees for now, then we'll go back over to 64. And then once we get to northwest of Wichita, Kansas, I should see the save icon pop up down here. And then I know we'll be safe if something happens to the sim. Um, because you can quit these missions as long as you've made it to a waypoint. In the transatlantic mission, in that flight, there's a waypoint every hour. So I could fly, as long as I flew an hour or two, I could quit and come back, it would bring me to the nearest waypoint. This, however, if you haven't been following along, all said and done, it's about six hours to a waypoint, six hours to a waypoint, and four hours to a waypoint. I know that's not exactly what those numbers are, but I seem to take longer, so six, six, and four. So what's that, 16 hours or so for me? This is just like one, right? So we have to get to Wichita before the sim can quit. So. I, I'll know when we get there because we'll see a save icon like it did in Albuquerque. So anyway, how am I doing this, right? How am I flying so long when I can't save it and quit except for two different two different times? Well, I've been leaving the sim running. So, well, first of all, I've been flying, trying to do as much as I can weekend mornings before the family needs me. And then late at night, I'll squeeze in a little bit here and there. But it's all spliced together. You, you can't tell when I'm leaving and coming back um but the sim has been running well i did quit had to start over but other than that i don't know week <laughs> without even more week in the week plus without um quitting the sim and it hasn't crashed i turned off windows so that or i made windows i went into the policy manager group policy in windows and told it to never restart if someone is logged in. So that way if you get any Windows updates, it won't um, automatically restart and stop everything I've been doing, because that has happened before. I was doing a very long flight, and I let it run overnight, and Windows updated and restarted, even though I had the sim running. So um, I enabled Google Policy to not restart if someone is logged in, and since I'm always logged in, and it's not gonna restart. So. That's how I handle that. I've just been leaving the sim running. Now, of course, that means my fans are slightly elevated in my computer because it's not totally idle even when it's paused. So I don't know if that's very good, but that's okay. I'm not going to keep it running once we get through this. Um, as far as my patience, I have a lot of patience. <laughs> this does take 
a lot of patients. Um, when I did the transatlantic site, I could trim the airplane and let it sit there. I had it, there's no autopilot, so I had to like tap the yoke every once in a while. But because we're going over land, I can't do that here. I mean, I'm always giving input. So, um, I haven't even been watching YouTube or anything. I've just been flying the plane, and I have Google Maps on my other monitor, and I'm just kind of following along on Google Maps. I'm comparing the scenery, the satellite scenery in the sim to the satellite scenery on Google Maps. I know the sim is Bing, but whatever. Was that a wind farm coming up? What is that? And then I've just been um, checking things out. So, that being said, where are we? So, this was Elkhart way back there and then we're following this road this road is you whoops this road is us 56 um going along here but i don't think well we could follow that all the way to wichita right um where is it then it turns into 51 where's wichita where are you wichita oh my gosh you're so far away oh this is gonna take so long that's okay um, once I'm done rambling, there's just going to be some sightseeing clips and then, you know, we'll be there. But, uh, so that's US-56. So I could follow US-56 if I wanted to, which maybe we will, just because we can. Or I can keep the VFR map zoomed in and keep the line where we are. So we're a little bit north of where they want us to be, because, you know, they're doing ads of crow flies. But I could follow the highways via Google Maps, and then I'll know where we are in like, the cities. Like, for example, if we follow US-56, we'll get to Hugleton. Um, and then if we keep following, it turns into 51, and then we take 54, and then we take, yeah, 54 to Wichita, I think. Turns into 400, yeah. So we could follow this, the roads. I don't know. We'll see what I feel like. Um, looking at Google Maps, it's all farmland. There's a river, pretty big river, what is it? I can't see that our car, car. Cimarron, Cimarron River. Other than that, it's just literally farm circles all the way to Wichita. Yep. So that means I will give you some sightseeing, but I'm not going to give you the same sightseeing for 45 minutes. So, um, yeah, so anyway. I rambled more than I planned to. I rehearsed what I was going to say and didn't say anything that I rehearsed. So the moral of the story is I've been doing, I've been getting through the patience part by just looking at Google Maps as I fly. It's been very, very interesting. But um, from here on out, I might follow the highways. I might not. But that's it. It's going to be very long <laughs> because... I don't need to worry about my altitude. Remember in the previous video, I turned off real world weather because it was not flyable. With It's very cold right now in the United States as I record this icing in the south and everything. Um, so it just was not flyable with real world weather. So I turned it off and made it like bush trip weather, I call it, where your clouds are, cloud base is just above your altitude. Wind is two knots. And just adjust the time to make it interesting. So, there you go. There's your introduction to part six. Again, I rehearsed it and messed it all up, but hopefully it was somewhat comprehensive. I think for a while I'm going to follow the highways just because I can. I'm going to give you some sightseeing. I'm going to try to put in some of the cities. Like Hugo Tin is coming up. Oops, I just screwed up my map. Um, stuff like that. So, we'll see bunch of sightseeing. I probably don't need to say anything until we get to Wichita. I don't know what there is to say. So enjoy a couple minutes of sightseeing and I'm going to compress like five hours of flying into a couple minutes. You are so lucky. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I love doing this or I won't be doing it. I'll see you in a little bit.
All right, this is Captain speaking. Just a quick interruption on the way to St. Louis, but there is Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> We're northwest of Wichita. It doesn't look like much from here, but it's there somewhere. Um, if I compare what I see below us to what I see on Google Maps, we're definitely in greater Wichita. You can kind of see the urbanization here a little bit, but we're staying exactly on the path of the mission just so that we make sure we hit the waypoint so it'll save. So if anything happens between here and St. Louis to the simulator, or that should say if anything happens to the simulator between here and St. Louis, we only have to come back to here. And we, have to re we only need to refly 4 hours instead of 10 or 11 hours. Um, but anyway, we went over the lake exactly where they want us to be. There it is. I'm not sure what happens at the lake. I didn't see many resorts or anything, so I'm not sure if it's a reserve, maybe. Maybe it's a reserve and there's a dam. I really should have looked it up before I spoke, but I didn't because I'm excited to be at the next waypoint. So we're going to stay on track exactly from here to St. Louis. Um, just waiting for that save icon to pop up so I can relax and have not had a save icon yet so um, it's not saving anything because there's nothing to save even if I force it to save we'd be kicked back to Santa Fe or Albuquerque so I want to make sure this grabs before I can relax um, no lies we're going to stay in north of Wichita looks like we're going to be in the middle of nowhere from here to St. Louis, um, we're not going to see Kansas City, doesn't look like. Um, nope. Nothing major in between, just... Um, well, it looks like we got a few foresty areas, sort of. So less plains like we're in now once we get to what? Um, well, beyond Wichita it gets to be a slightly less plains -y, I guess. And then we'll... Um, Hit some forest areas. I'm looking for any state parks or national parks. I don't see any yet, but um, Land of the Ozarks. Maybe we'll hit the Land of the Ozarks State Park. Perhaps. But otherwise, from here to St. Louis and nothing major in between. It looks like we could follow US 54 more or less all the way in. And then I think we're going to follow I-70 to find the airport. But other than that... Yeah, maybe we'll see the Ozarks. Um, but it's just some sightseeing from here to St. Louis. I don't know if I'm really going to talk much between now and here. So it's going to be, this video is covering about about six hours of flying. But it's only going to be however long the time is on this video. I don't know, probably under an hour all said and done. Although I'll probably get really wordy when we get to St. Louis. But otherwise... One more thing to mention, um, I did not notice you had a save icon, maybe it happened when I was looking at my map. But anyway, uh, I came down 6,000 feet. Right now the ground level is 1,300 feet above sea level, so that put us about 5,300 or so um, feet above ground level. I sure feel like we're lower than that. We started picking up a lot of terrain turbulence. I'm starting to climb again ever so slightly. We're almost back up to 7,000. I'm going to find where the airplane is most stable and that's altitude will fly until we come into St. Louis and then we got to get down because I think St. Louis is 605 feet or 499 feet or something above sea level so we have to come down what is that 64, 6300 feet or so. It doesn't feel that way, but we'll see when we get there. Otherwise, that is your wordy introduction or interruption. I'm just looking for a save icon so I can relax, but I will keep flying beyond it. Um, the sim has stayed running for several days overnight, so hopefully it can stay running for another day or two so I can finish this. Um, yeah, that's it. So a little bit of sightseeing, but I think if it goes as planned... I'll see ya in St. Louis. Enjoy the space in between. It's only four hours condensed, right?
Alright, just jumping in here with a little bit of narration because the turbulence has been so wild that if the aircraft stresses and it says it crashed, I want to make sure I catch the evidence on camera. <laughs> but it's been pretty wild. It looks like I'm just perfectly gliding smoothly to you, but you aren't seeing how much I'm fighting this yoke to keep it looking like it's smooth. This has been ridiculous. Like, oh my gosh, it's been... I don't know, if I let my guard down for a split second, it just goes way to the left, way to the right, like full turn. It's been really crazy. At one point, I had my yoke all the way to the right, and it was still turning left. And then it finally went to the right, and oh my gosh, it was nuts. So I don't know if there's like a bug, I don't know. We had this happen before in the transatlantic flight, where all of a sudden it would like turn one way all the way, and I'd have my yoke the other way, and it wouldn't turn back, and then it would suddenly turn back. That happened a dozen times on the transatlantic flight. This one, this is the first time, actually second time this has happened. It happened right away in San Diego and now it's happening here, which if you look under the right wing is Butler, Kansas. Um, Butler, Kansas. And then if you look half, whoa, whoa, halfway between the airplane and the horizon, you'll see, um, oh, see, look, see, it's just doing whatever it wants again. Uh, if you look halfway between the plane and the horizon, you'll see the water that just borders the Ozarks National Park. I think that's what they call it. Let me check here. What do they call that? Um, hang on, I'm trying to fly a plane while I look at Google Maps. It's not working so well. Oh, never mind. I was, think, I was thinking Lake of the Ozark State Park. We're nowhere near that yet. <laughs> that's another hour plus. This water you see here is what do they call this no it's not telling me i don't know it's a big sneaky looking lake thing um just before warsaw can here you go harry truman reservoir harry s truman reservoir that's what you're looking at then after that will be another body of water which is another reservoir probably I'm not getting a name, but then that borders Lake of the Ozark State Park. So maybe that's Lake of the Ozark. I don't know. Technically, we've been in the Ozarks for a long time. The Ozarks is a huge, huge region um, where we're flying right now. But I just wanted to see the state park. But we're going to be north of it, which is fine. Anyway, I just wanted to give you that update because turbulence is nuts. And if something was happening to the plane, I wanted to catch on camera, but... Seems like we smoothed out a little bit. I still can't let my guard down. But anywho, we're going to aim for the tip of the reservoir, and then we're going to aim for the next lake. And then we'll have about two hours until St. Louis. So I'm going to get you much sights. Well, not as much sightseeing as I can, but I'll get you some sightseeing of some key places if I can figure out what they are. And um, you shouldn't hear my voice again until we begin our approach because you all know how wordy I can get during an approach. I'll save my wordiness for then. See you in a little bit.
right, another quick interruption here because um, I just want to point out that we're over Jefferson City, Missouri. And if you look, you can see the outline of the St. Louis metropolitan area off in the distance here. We'll follow the river in. This is the Missouri River, I believe. Uh, yeah, of course it is. We'll follow the Missouri River into St. Louis. And then my plan is to fly directly over the St. Louis airport because I'm hoping it'll save it as reaching a waypoint that way and if we do crash we don't have to go four hours back to wichita then we can just try again from over the airport of course i'm hoping not to crash at all but you know it'd be nice to have a backup plan a contingency plan so we're going to fly right over the airport and hopefully we'll save it as a waypoint just in case and i got that idea because there's a waypoint marker here See the waypoint marker there over the airport? So, um, that's why I thought of doing that. And I do have the air nav chart up for the airport, and we'll talk about runway selection and all that stuff in a minute. But first things first, and that is to follow the river into St. Louis. And I think you'll hear my voice again once we're ready to get an approach. Um, I am starting to lose altitude. I'm trying to lose altitude, but I keep going up. It's really turbulent. But anyway, enjoy a sightseeing moment or two on the way, and I'll see you in St. Louis. We're almost there. Get this, we have the St. Louis metropolitan area in sight. I think we have the runway or the airport in sight too. I think it's right, right here, I think. But there's something really cool before that. And we're going to go over the Spirit of St. Louis airport on our way, which would be super cool. So I want to make sure we see that. I think that's right here, I think. And I think that's St. Louis right there. Um, so well, I'll show you the map, it's KSUS. I'll show you here when we get there. We're right on track. We should be right on track. Yep, we're exactly on track. k -Sus, and then St. Louis, which is, yeah, I, that's St. Louis for sure. So I'm guessing that's k -Sus. Um, It'd be kind of fun if they had this land there at the Spirit of St. Louis Airport, but I understand that probably didn't exist, at least not in that way, when um, this real flight took place. So we're going to St. Louis. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fly over the St. Louis Airport because they do mark it as a waypoint. I think I said this before the cut. They do mark it as a waypoint. So that way, I'm hoping it'll save it. So if we do crash, then we would only have to maybe start from the airport above it and not four hours back in Wichita because I don't know when I would find time or the motivation to refly all the way from Wichita because it's been, it's been like five hours. It's supposed to be three and a half. It's been like five so I really hope, first of all, that we don't crash at all, and then it's just moot to even talk about this. But if we do crash, I hope they'll let us start above the airport. I don't know. We have landed this before, obvi obviously, because of the transatlantic flight, but we did crash in Paris, and we had to start back at um, Eiffel Tower, because that was the last waypoint. So 
we'll see see how this goes um i would talk about how i'm going to land my strategy for not crashing when we get close to the airport and we're going to land 30 left i have the real life chart out which is current in real life airport elevation is 617 feet so we have to come down about 5,000 some feet still and we're going to use runway 30 left because we'll be swinging around and it's 11,000 feet and by the to come by the time we come to a stop we'll be intersecting with runway six is what which is what the navlox is to use but that's only 7,000 feet six and seven uh, i'm getting antsy <laughs> 7,600 feet for runway six which is of course enough but i want more space and i'll tell you why when we get closer to landing okay so um talked about the runway talked about the elevation we have to come down i do see the airport in front of me i'm looking for the spirit of st louis airport which is either this or this and that's it for now that's your pre-flight briefing um and then just remember this video then would conclude leg one there's still another leg i can't remember how long it is if it's like six hours or eight hours or something it's another long one so I'll have to set aside time to leave the sim running again for probably a week or two for that. Now, by the time you watch the videos, there's probably not that much space in between them. But as I record this, it's been a long time recording this, which is the reason why you probably had a huge space between videos before the series. Anyway, I'm rambling because I'm trying to kill time here, but I guess I can just cut this out. So I'm going to get closer to the airport. We'll look for the Spirit of St. Louis Airport. And then when I come back with you, I will ramble on about landing. See you in a moment. And there's the Spear to St. Louis Airport right there, about to go into the brace. Oh, the airplane. And now I gotta figure out where our other airport is. It's not directly off the water, but it's close to the water. So, it should be, let's see, there's bump out to the left. Let's see, we got Spear to St. Louis comes in, curves left. Bumps right and then left of the airport. The airport should be right here, I guess, because there's the stuff in front of it. So we're going to head that direction in a moment. Um, and then we'll aim for runway six so we know where we're going. But then we'll fly out and turn around and take 30 left, like I said. And we'll talk about how I'm going to land during the final approach. And we got some weird airports here. Frame rate dropped a little bit. So that means we got some weird handcrafted airports. So that means we could get some, well, not smooth again. But that means we could get some weird frame rates when we try to land. And then when we take off in the next video, it's smooth again. So we have weird, the sim has weird issues with airports like that. You can be flying around an area at over 100 frames per second. You start to land, you drop down to like 20. You can barely land. Restart everything, it's at 20 frames the second your wheels leave the ground, you're up to 100 and some frames again. It's very strange, I know other people have the same problem, but they don't really talk about it, so I don't know what the deal is there. Um, anyway, there's your airport, your St. Louis, St. Louis Park Airport, because in Minneapolis here we have a suburb called St. Louis Park, um, which I don't live there, but I have a lot of friends that live there. 
Um, anyway, there's your spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> airport looks beautiful. Over there's our airport somewhere. I still can't figure out where it is. How can I not find this airport? Because, yeah, because there's the big curve of the river where it meets the Mississippi. See, boom, boom, there's the Mississippi. Boom, boom, meets there. There's the farm field. There's an you know, like urban area. And then the airport's supposed to be right behind it. Is this it here, maybe? Maybe that's it. I mean, it's supposed to be there. Anyway, let's start heading that way now. I'm curious what um, the map says. Where does it say we are? A little bit south? Yeah, a little bit south. All right, so now if we head 75 degrees, we should line up with the airport. Because um, here's the highway. Yeah, this has to be it right here because there's Interstate 270. And that goes right next to the runway. So that has to be running. This has to be, I don't know, 30 left would be over there to here. Runway 6 would be like here somewhere. I don't know, man, but we're not going to lose too much more altitude until we've crossed over. We'll lose a little bit more. But anyway, let's aim just to the east of 270, and then the runway should render in, or the airport should render in. And then we'll circle to land. There we go. It's starting to render. I still don't... Okay, yep, here's our runway 6 right here. Right there. So that is what we'll aim for, but then we're going to circle around, do 30 left, which would be like right there. And we'll take up as much runway as we possibly can, because we're going to need it. This is a cool view, though, I must say. That's a really cool view now that everything finally rendered in. Um, well, I was going to say, I'm getting kind of nervous. Oh, the, as we get lower to the ground, of course, the turbulence is picking up, and this plane loves ground turbulence. I don't understand or train turbulence. Oh boy, here we go. I've been, I've literally been losing sleep over this moment for a week. Because if I crash, I have to go back. But I have confidence that we can land just fine. Um, hopefully not overconfidence. I will do my best. Of course I'm going to do my best. Um, oh, yeah, it's, okay, I don't want to get too much more speed though. So let's bring back throttles now to descend instead of trimming down um let's see let's see let's see barometer is set so our altimeter altitude is correct i don't need to worry about gyro drift on the compass um, bring back throttles to descend let's see i'll engage my mixture more once we're a little bit lower anything else i can think of right now to prepare um Try not to worry about it. Because if I choke, then I will crash. And then I'll have to redo four hours. Yuck. I mean, I don't mind the time, because I like the time in the simulator. But redoing something you've already done, kind of, it's a little deflating. Especially because, remember, I would started this three times. If you remember, what was that? A couple months ago for me. I don't know the video thing. Maybe a week or two for you in the video um, schedule. I started this three times. The first time, I couldn't climb over the mountains because of the weather. Second time, I got to Phoenix and I iced up. And I was going to, you know, I quit the sim to come back another day. And I, would, I forgot about the waypoint thing, so it started me back in San Diego. And then that time, um, it was fine until the weather started screwing us up. So then I realized the rule of weather was turned on. So I made it what I call the bush trip weather, which is what we've been doing. And I don't feel guilty about it because rule of weather right now in this part of the world is insanely cold and icy and cloudy and we could not do this flight with real brother turned on you just couldn't so this is my third time i don't want to have to redo last four hours so anyway hopefully i don't choke i mentioned that because i play piano and i used to perform when i was performing all the time i was fine but when i would perform here and there i would know pieces like i could record them in one take i would I mean, it was amazing and then i'd get on stage and it'd be like what's the first freaking note and i would choke and if things went really well, I'd think, well, this is going really well, and then I'd choke. So, I'm a choker. <laughs> I don't want to choke on this landing. Um, there we go. The skyline just rendered in. 
Um, perhaps when we take off from the next leg, which will be the next video, we can fly by the St. Louis Arch, perhaps, if I can find it. <laughs> but the last time I saw the St. Louis skyline was when I watched Aviation 101 video. He did a video a long time ago where he circled the St. Louis skyline. That was a long time ago. Um, I've never seen it in the sim. Things are still rendering in. And our altitude is fine. Let's bring back throttle. Actually, it's not fine. Let's bring back throttle so we descend a little more. And once we get to like 4,600 feet, I'll put full mixture back in. And I'm going to look for a save icon when I fly over the airport. And, you know, I already said, just in case. Hopefully it'll start us here, but hopefully it's moot. But yes, I've been losing sleep over this for over a week. Like my wife says, why do your hobbies torture you? I'm like, it, they don't always torture me. <laughs> it's just, I, I, fewer people are doing these long flights than I thought. So I'm like, I want to do it. Like, I want to do something that not everybody's doing. And um, I just assumed everybody was doing these long flights, the transatlantic and transcontinental. But then I found out, like, probably fewer than, like, 50 or, what was the number? There, some, there, you can, I don't know, it depends where you get your stats, but, like, a time, if considering there's millions and millions of people who do this, there are literally millions upon millions of people who do this. Only like a dozen or two or three have done these flights. I'm like, what? I'm like, let's do it then. You know, if I'm one of like 15 people who have done this, dude, let's totally do it. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, you can get your stats wherever you want. You can, whatever. Like Forza Horizon, I can't find the webpage again, but there's a webpage that has stats. And then Forza Horizon, I'm in the top 0.04% of players of completion. But that ranks me at like 3,100 or something like that. <laughs> Even if it's 0.04%. But in the flight simulator, you just have to like see how many YouTubers are doing stuff and streamers and what people say in forums. and Yeah, so that's why I'm doing these, not to torture myself. But because no one in air quotes, nobody is doing these. So what the heck? By no one, I mean fewer than 100, right? Um, that's usually how that works. I'm looking at the skyline. But yeah, people will be like, no one is playing this game. Well, there's still 2 million people playing it, but if it had 10 million, then yeah, 2 million is that many. Alright, I'm rambling because I'm antsy. It's been a week. It's been over a week. So, forgive my rambling, but I assume you don't blame me that... Um... <laughs> After a week of doing this, I'm kind of antsy. Duke, it says down there. What does it say? Duke. McEagle. I think I can actually go outside the airplane or whatever. I missed it. Oh, it's over there. There it is. Duke. Duke Realty. Duke Realty. Remember, it's Realtor, not Realtor. You don't go to the Docator, right? All right, we're over the airport. We're way higher than we wanted to be because it's busy rambling. Let's do full mixture. The power's going down, but that's okay. With the full, what? My engine turned off. There we go. <gasps> that freaked me out. Oh, man. That's not overspeed, though. My mixture, I put my mixture in, and if you look in here, I bet it went all the way down first, because you hear me go click, click to reset it. Because sometimes, you know, these missions and bush trips start with um start with everything on and sometimes the controls are backwards like if your control isn't in position oh that freaked me the heck out so anyway let's um whoops let's go parallel to runway 30 left which is this huge one right here 11,000 feet i did not see a save icon when it went over the airport so if we crash we'll have to go back to wichita it did not save it as a waypoint so how am I going to do this? Well, we know my altitude is correct. We know we're at, well, in real life it's 617 feet. Who knows if it is in the sim. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to approach at 1,500 feet above. So we're going to approach at 2,100 feet. And there's 2,900, so let's not get too much lower. I'm going to land from the outside. Sorry if that's lame, but hey, I'm not going to crash. <laughs> we're going to land from the outside. Oh my gosh, my frame rates are going bonkers. Again, it's not the performance of my computer. It's the way, it's just the way it is when you get to these handcrafted airports. It's super annoying. 
but it's not my performance because if I'm in like New York City and I'm away from the handcraft airports, we pick down 120. It just makes it difficult to land if you're all screwed up. So hopefully he's just rendering things in and it'll be okay. Let's not lose any more altitude. Oh my gosh, this is not flyable. Why do they do this? It's like when you're looking at POIs and um, they stand out like a sore thumb. Okay, 30 left is there. Let's start coming back now. The way this is going to work, does anyone land from the outside? Sorry that's lame, but I don't care. Um, we're going to use our shadow to know when we're going to touch down. We are going to coast over the runway at like 62 knots, just outside of the white arc. And then, um, as we're about to touch down on its own, I'm going to let it touch down on its own. I'm going to kill power. So I'm not going to kill power. The, like Normally you kill power to the threshold with a prop. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to kind of do more like a jet, right? So we're going to coast over the runway. That's why we need the long runway. We're going to use the shadow. Oh my gosh, this green is ridiculous. This stuttering, I'm so ticked off to be honest. Um, it's not, again, it's not the performance of my computer. It's just the way the sim works in some of these reports. Now it's smoother because I've finally pre-rendered. Get going. Anyway, we're going to coast over the runway. This does not look like 11,000 feet, whatever. And um, we're going to use the shadow to judge our distance or, you know, altitude or whatever above the runway. I'm going to let it touch itself down to basically stall itself onto the runway very gently and then I'm going to just ride it out as long as I can without the brakes you better not have a crosswind and then um, I'll pull back on the yoke to keep the tail wheel down feet on the rudder so we don't to ground loop and I'm just gonna let it roll out that's why I wanted the long runway I'm gonna try not to touch the brakes unless I really have to um, yeah I mean, because I don't want it to strike the prop and have to redo four hours so here we go Holy guacamole, holy crap on a cracker, ho holy poop on a popsicle. I've been losing sleep over this moment for a week. And the stuttering is annoying. If I crash, I'm going to blame it on the stuttering. And then, whoop, we're about to stall. And then I'll be like, there's a, there's a bug at the airport. I can't finish the mission. Anyway, we don't want to, I mean, you can bounce a little bit, but we don't want to. Here we go, coming down right above the white arc. And we're going to be as gentle as possible. And my heart hurt. Oh God, my adrenaline. I have a heart condition and adrenaline is painful. And the adrenaline is so painful right now. Do not bounce. Do not bounce. Do not bounce. Ground effects just kicked in. That's fine. We're about to stall. That's fine. Do not bounce. Just touch down on your own, turkey head. Okay, there we go. Oh, this adrenaline is painful. This is my heart condition. The adrenaline is very painful. Oh my gosh. Okay. Slow down. Brakes, brakes, brakes a little bit. Okay, it's not really striking. Yoke is all the way back. We're going to ride it out. I'm going to try to stop around runway 6 so it counts us. I mean, maybe the whole airport counts, but maybe not. See why we need 11,000 feet? Oh, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Stop. My brake's not working. There we go. I hope it lets us stop here. I don't want to have to taxi. My yoke is all the way back. We're at 14 knots. 13 knots. And we're going downhill, so we're not slowing down. There's the save icon. Oh, man. Okay. I'm having the, the, um, what happens? Oh, yeah, we're going downhill, so we're speeding up. What's it called when, after the adrenaline rush, like the, oh, oh, okay. 17 hours <laughs> to do that. What was this supposed to be? Five and a half, five and a half, so that's 11, three and a half. So it's supposed to be 14 and a half hours. Okay, so, because of my heart condition, adrenaline is insanely painful. That was so painful. And now I'm having the after effects of adrenaline, so I'm extremely tired just because I'm landing a pretend plane. But those of you who are in a flight simulator, you get it. 
So thank you for watching the first leg. <laughs> we have like eight or 10 more hours to go. So subscribe so you know when the next video of this series, because now it's turned into a series. Subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. Like so other people know we exist. There are so few people doing this. I normally don't ask for this, but share this all over the internet. Tell everybody that we're doing this um, because I'm proud of it, damn it. <laughs> and I want to share it with people. So I will see you starting leg two and part seven as soon as I take a little break and record it. So hopefully you're subscribed and I'll see you then.